Hey everybody, what's going on? Jeff Rinker, another episode of The Daily Ticket. This one for a Monday. It's the 5th of February. It's 2024. And my God, a weekend without football. It was tough. I'm not going to lie to you. Saturday, I watched back-to-back college basketball games, Michigan and Michigan State. Michigan is a total and utter embarrassment. Jawan Howard needs to be fired. We might hit that later on in a podcast, but my goodness, that program is a colossal joke right now. Michigan State rebounding a little bit. That's exciting. They'll be a tournament team yet again and probably will underachieve in March. Like, I wanted football so bad over the weekend, but I just told myself, this is the next, what, eight months of our lives? I don't even know how long it is until, like, August when we start seeing exhibition games i know the draft is in detroit that's gonna be sweet but i'm a big game guy i'm not a big like practice guy or draft guy i like watching games Uh, that's tough over the weekend not gonna lie i watched north carolina duke thinking like okay this is the big rivalry did nothing for me i watched patino take on yukon at the garden did nothing for me and i'm a big fan of rick patino I wish he would have taken the Michigan job instead of Jawan Howard. So we got one more game, people. We got one more game. It's the Super Bowl. It's just around the corner. And then we got the offseason. How'd you deal with it? Were you depressed at all? I think Detroiters have done a nice job of getting over the Lions loss. And now it's just like this bleakness. Like, don't get me wrong. Weiss weather is going to be just around the corner, I kind of feel. I can take my daughter to the park. I can go golfing. I mean, yesterday it was 50 degrees. We were driving home from the mall with the windows down. It was very nice, very pleasant. But I miss it. I miss it so bad. Don't you? Maybe I'm being pathetic. Maybe I'm being depressing. Let me know. Comment section. How you getting by without the old pig skin? Oh, God. It sucks doesn't it? Anyway, I am forcing myself to move on. I am. You should force yourself to move on as well. I mean, I heard Pat Caputo yesterday on the radio talking about Dan Campbell's gambles and the fourth down plays. I do think we're kind of past that. It's been about a week. Now it's actually been over a week. So I think we got to move on as a society, as Metro Detroiters, as Michiganders. I think we got to move on. We're going to be okay. We're going to get through this. You just got to find the next thing that you're interested in. Go watch some shows on Netflix. Go binge the latest Fargo on Hulu. You're going to get through this. I promise. You will. I promise. I think. And football is not around the corner. But you know what is around the corner is the baseball season. Tigers should be okay this year. They play in a god-awful division, the AL Central. There is a chance they shock the world a little bit and maybe win the division and go to the postseason and captivate us during the summer. Like, it's crazy because the Lions were so good, you kind of forget about everything else. And then you wake up, and it's February, and you're like, holy shit, spring training. That's like this month. Actual exhibition games. This month. That's exciting. So I started looking at the team. I started doing a real deep dive into the Tigers. And wish me luck, by the way, because this is my first non-football, I think, podcast since Miggy's last game. Or I think I did a podcast about the Pistons having lost 27 in a row and the dumb comments by Tom Gore as the owner. Other than that, this has all been football. So I hope you keep watching. I hope you keep listening. I I pray. But here it goes. Deep breath. Let's talk baseball. The Detroit Tigers. I know it sounds weird, doesn't it? But I've been thinking about this for a while. Like Javier Baez, we know he stinks, right? A.J. Hinch talked about the Tigers sending coaches over to Javi's house in Puerto Rico. And hopefully we see a much more motivated and improved Javier Baez. Hard to believe that dude makes the most money on the Tigers. And he's like the worst player in Major League Baseball. Go look at the stats, OPS-wise. He was like bottom three in the entire league. 
There's one weird thing about Javier Baez, though. It seems like when he wants to, he can still take over a baseball game. The problem is he's got to be properly motivated, and apparently $23 million a year doesn't motivate him enough. I mean, I don't know. It's weird. Usually when a guy in his 30s loses it and stinks and has like a 600 OPS, usually he flat out just can't play baseball anymore. I don't think that's Javi. I really don't. they got to find a way to motivate the guy. And I think that's ridiculous considering how much he makes and what he does for a living. But apparently that's where we are. But the Tigers have done a nice job, I think, in the offseason. They went out, got Kenta Maeda, Mark Kana, two guys that combined 71 years old, but that's okay. I mean, you look at the rotation, not awful by any means. Tarek Skubal's your ace, Jack Flaherty, they went out and signed. Kenta Maeda, Matt Manning, and Reese Olsen. I think that's going to be the starting five, or at least the starting five going in the camp, right? And like I mentioned, they got Mark Kana. They signed Cole Keefe to a massive contract. He has yet to play a game in Major League Baseball. you got to believe he's going to be the second baseman of the future and the second baseman of this year. They're still looking for a third baseman. I've never quite seen anything like it. Like the Tigers have gone through year after year after year without having a third baseman. And I think Zach McKinstry is going to get most of the load at the hot corner this year. The outfield is going to be Parker Meadows in center, Riley Green in right, and Mark Connor in left. I think Torque, no doubt, will be your first baseman. Second baseman, Colt Keith. Javi will be your shortstop unless they just get sick of him and have to move on, which won't happen. And then, like I mentioned, McKinstry will be your third baseman. And Jake Rogers had a hell of a year last year, will be the catcher. So that's the team, okay? That's what we're looking at, going into war. But there's a guy out there that the Tigers should go out and get because I look at that roster and I say to myself the same thing we said last year. Not enough offense on this team. Tigers were third to last in team OPS last season at 687. That's pathetic. They were fourth to last in batting average last season, 236. That's absolutely dismal. There is a guy out there that can help the Tigers right now. And you don't have to pay him a ton of money. And you don't have to give him a whole lot of term on his contract. And he's already been here before. And he's responsible for one of the coolest fucking moments ever in a Detroit Tigers uniform. And you love him. And I love him. And my mother loves him too. Go get J.D. Martinez. J.D. Martinez is a free agent. He'll be 37 in August. And before you say ba 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 age, look at Kana, 35. Look at Maeda, 36. J.D. Martinez is perfect. Last season in 113 games with the Dodgers, he hit 271, 33 dongs, and a 900 almost OPS. 833 OPS in the postseason last year. 1,000 OPS in his career in the second season. J.D. Martinez is the perfect man for this team. Why? You only have to pay him for one year or two years. He can definitely help this team on the field and also off the field. You don't have to be reminded what a student of the game J.D. is. Remember J.D. and his notebook after Al Avila got him off the scrap heap in Houston? He came to Detroit, he studied Miggy, he studied opposing pitchers, and he turned out to be an absolute stud. And in case you're wondering if J.D. still has it, you know who hit cleanup in the All-Star game for the National League last year? That's right, J.D. Martinez. Not to mention, he's not going to be taking anybody's spot. He's not going to demand to play left field because he really doesn't play left anymore. He's not going to demand to play right field, because he really doesn't play the outfield anymore. If you need to use J.D. in the outfield, you can. 38 games in the outfield of left and right field two seasons ago. Last season, only six games in left and right field, but he was oft injured, okay? Here's the deal. Like, Martinez would rather play left than right, but you don't even need to play him in the outfield. He can be your DH, and he's not taking anybody's spot. And before you hit me with, well, what about Kerry Carpenter? Well, don't say Kerry Carpenter. You got to use him by his name. I call him Kerry Bonds, and that nickname better stick because it's freaking awesome, isn't it? Kerry Bonds, 
Who's with me? Anybody? I don't know if he likes it, but I sure like it. But I know Detroit's in love with Kerry Carpenter. I do. But he kind of went in the tank last season towards the end after lighting the baseball world on fire 34 games to end the season without a single home run and an OPS of under 700. So I do believe that you cannot have Kerry Carpenter be your all-time DH next season. I also think that J.D. Martinez only played in 113 games last year would be okay platooning at the DH positions. He hits righties and lefty pretty much the same. And he can teach this team a ton about hitting. And I'm sick and tired of this so-called rebuild, by the way. Like, you play in a garbage division where who's the best? The Cleveland Guardians? They lost Tito. Like, honestly, who are you worried about in this division? The Minnesota Twins? Well, maybe they win it again. But you need offense. You have pitching. There's no question. Seems like J.D. Martinez is the perfect guy. Now, he doesn't come without a downside. Last season, he played in just 113 games. He's been showing signs of decline prior to his bounce back year in 2023, but it was a bounce back year last year. His strikeout rate ballooned all the way to 31% last season, kind of sold out for power. And his projected strikeout rate isn't very good either. Like, listen, he is a declining baseball player. I'm not going to tell you otherwise. However, this is a guy that can check all the boxes. He can still bomb. You need that help. He can still hit for average. You need that help. But more than anything else, look at all the young guys you got on this team. Spencer Torkelson and Riley Green, they're both still young. Kerry Carpenter is still young. I think Scott Harris has done a nice job of going out and getting a couple vets to teach these kids how to play freaking baseball. And I think J.D. Martinez could help. I think you also add to the fact that J.D. is not going to sign just anywhere. Didn't want to go to Boston last year because he didn't think they could win. He was right, correct? He ended up going to the Dodgers. They got knocked out in the postseason. Other playoff teams want this man. I read an article how Steve Cohen and the Mets are going to try to sign him to try to make good on the disaster that was last year and that huge payroll. The Arizona Diamondbacks made it all the way to the World Series. They're going to maybe look to sign J.D. Martinez. J.D., of course, played there for a half a season after the Tigers got rid of him, and he made the playoffs and was really good for the D-backs. Other teams want this man. Go get him, Scott Harris. He's not going to cost you much. He made $10 million bucks last year. So what do you give him, 12 for one? Maybe you give him 24 for two. Harris has already proven he doesn't care how old the guy is. Kenta Maeda, 36 years old. Mark Kana, 35 years old. J.D. Martinez, 37 years old. Let's go. It makes perfect sense. And more than anything else, I cannot watch another lackluster, awful, pathetic offensive performance day in and day out by a Tiger baseball team. So J.D., my savior. J.D., My idea. I must say, though, I woke up yesterday. The first tweet I saw when I scrolled on the Twitter was Tony Paul from the Detroit News saying, J.D. Martinez, go sign him. That's the tweet. So there's some backing here. I did Inside Tiger Town with Dan Dickerson a couple weeks ago, filling in for Pat Caputo. You know, okay, you know, I was sick or something, you know. And Dickerson was talking about great idea to go get J.D. Martinez. He's out there. He's there for the taking. He's not going to take anybody's spot. He's not going to take anybody's role. He's the perfect guy for a team that is still sort of rebuilding, but hopes to contend in an easier division. What do you think? A, how did I do on my first non-football podcast? B, J.D. Martinez, brilliant idea. Don't you think? I think so. Let me know what you think. Comment section. That's the podcast for today. I'm sorry, it's not about football. But I'll tell you this, Brad Holmes speaks later on today. So tomorrow's podcast, more than likely, is going to be about football. All right, let's read some comments and then get the hell out of here. Sound good? Fantastic. So the last podcast I did, thank you for watching and listening. It was all about keeping the coordinators. Aaron Glenn is coming back. Ben Johnson is coming back. 
By the way, did you see Ben Johnson, by the way, said he's not interested in the Washington job because he thought the owners were more basketball people instead of football people. That's after people said he didn't interview well. So good for Ben, fighting back a little bit. But here's some comments. I'll give you bad and good comments all along. All right. Jared Thiemann, 34, says, how does this guy have a show? So that's a negative comment. The guy obviously doesn't like me. And then how about this? Somebody responded to him at user dash DK3KW4WS28. If you want to, I don't know, follow this individual. He says, got to be nepotism. Dad must own the channel. No other explanation. Makes sense. So I, I can tell you, no nepotism. Why the, why the hurtful comments? I, I don't get it. You know, who thinks I'm good? A lot of people think I'm good. Two people in the room with me right now think I'm pretty damn good. My daughter and my wife. Here, I'll ask them. Listen to them. Hey, guys, you think I'm pretty good at this? Woo-hoo. Okay, so I got a woo-woo and I got a eh. Aye, aye, aye. Pretty good, right? Let's get to more comments. Kevin A. Rez, 6553. Your point about the second interview is spot on, especially because they were flying into Detroit to meet with Ben before he could take a second interview elsewhere. Of course, yes. The commanders started all those dirty rumors. Like, we wanted to start rumors on Ben Johnson so he would stay in Detroit, and the commanders now have started rumors because they don't want to look like idiots because they couldn't land Ben Johnson. What else do I got for you? Hmm. How about this? Austin bros, love the Lions talk. Just want to know when a new topic will be discussed. Would love to hear about the Tigers' upcoming season under Scott Harris and Red Wings' current race to the postseason. Let's switch it up. Austin, I think you'd be happy at this one, Ben. Hmm. Oh, Rem97 says, go Rieger. That seems like a positive. And then last one for you. This one says, holy fuck, without football, this is going to be a long off season. That's from Biz Raining 64. Right here we go. We're going to do our best to make these entertaining. I got some good ideas for the podcast. I'm going to go back to a little trivia. I'm going to have Wojo take on Stony. I think that would be fun. I got some other ideas that we'll unveil as we uh, get down the road here. But that's the podcast for today. I think the Tigers should go out and get JD Martinez. What about you? Makes perfect sense. You can get them for cheap, only going to cost you one or two years a term, and it can definitely help this baseball team offensively on the field and off the field as well with some of the younger players on this team. All right, let me know what you think. Comment section, and we'll catch you tomorrow on the Daily Ticket. At one point this week, we'll also talk about the Super Bowl, the Niners and the Chiefs. A lot of people say they're not going to watch. I will be watching. I don't believe the people that say they're not going to watch. Like our midday show, Doug and Scott. They claim they're not going to watch. I think they're liars. They're going to watch. Everybody's going to watch. It's the Super Bowl. Why wouldn't you watch? All right, catch you tomorrow. Have a great Monday, everybody. See ya.